Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Biotechnica, Shekhar Suman here and today we are going to talk about not one, not two, not three, ten untold rules of CSIR net life sciences. In this video, we are going to talk about some untold rules and facts which is very very important for all of you to know if you want to qualify CSIR net with a high rank. So are you ready? Yes? Let's get started. All right, so the first rule is always attempt part C questions first. Now many students can argue, many teachers can argue that no, let's go serial wise, start with part A and part B. But you look at this, part C carries the biggest marks. Now number amount of marks allotted to part C is highest. On the top of it, it's the toughest monster, right? On the top of it, if it is a tough, toughest monster, then you should be attempting with, with the fresh mind, right? And as soon as you start your exam, you'll have a fresh mind, right? So you will be able to score higher in part C if you start your uh, attempt for part C in the beginning, right? So first rule, untold rule is attempt part C first. In your practice exams also, in your mock tests also, always attempt part C first. So let's move on to the rule number two. All right, so the rule number two for all of you today is attempt match the following questions often. So if you go and see if there is a match the following qu uh, question with answer options, four answer options, obviously it will be a multiple choice question. You should attempt that first because even if you know one or two correct answers, if you're able to match one or two correct uh, statements, then your chances of qualifying becomes higher because the options will give you the clue which one is the right answer option. So that's my second rule, second untold rule which you should follow. If you see a match the following, please attempt that first. All right, so the rule number three. Rule number three is never ever attempt a question based on an experiment with a previous preset experiment which you have in mind. Now definitely the exam setter will not give you the experiment based questions which you have studied. It must be having some kind of a twist. So never ever go in and say okay I read this question somewhere this is how the answer was supposed to be solved when you go in and solve it. Never ever do that. If it is an experimental based question, experiment based question generally in part C we see that you have to always attempt it with your eyes open and your mind open right open all the windows of your sense organs before you attempt such a question because it can be lethal in fact i would say if it is not important you probably can skip that too so that's the rule number three moving on to the rule number four so the rule number four which i wish to give you today is if you don't know the syllabus weightage properly then you don't know the direction in which your preparation is going if you want to prepare today or whenever you want to prepare your for your exam, always take a print out of the syllabus on a bond paper, mark it whatever you have already studied in MSc, mark it whatever is easy for you, mark it whatever is difficult for you and mark it whatever you don't like. And then also mark which particular syllabus, which particular part of the syllabus is more important. You, uh, you can check Biotechnica's uh, um, course modules where we have mentioned, in fact in the description of this video also I'm mentioning all the weightage of the syllabus, okay. It's very very important to know what's your liking and what is the weightage. If both merge together, that is where success happens. So that's my rule number four. Rule number five, the untold rule number five is if you prepare for unit one to four and unit eight of CSIR and life sciences, then studying other units becomes easier. So always look at starting from unit one to four first and unit eight and then only move to the other set of units. So that way you will be in a better position and you will be able to correlate and study when you're studying other units because other units more or less also depend on these units. So that's the rule which you should follow. Moving on to the next rule. All right, so the rule number six, which I would like to give you today is always whenever you're looking at graphical questions, okay? Graphical questions needs 
additional attention. Why? Because it has got an X axis and Y axis and X axis. What is there? What is a uh, metric there? And what is a metric on the Y axis? Exam setters always play around it. Okay, so never ever play with you. I mean, never ever miss out on the X axis and Y axis. What exactly it, the data is representing? Okay. Also under this. I would like to add that whenever you are reading a number, always look for units, whether it is kilogram, whether it is gram, whether it is milliliter, whether it is liter, what exactly is the unit? Okay, because exam setters also not just play with the graphical question, they also play, play with the units. It's a very old strategy which they play just to check if you are good in your analytical power. So remember graphical questions, be careful and with units, be careful. So that's my rule. All right, so the untold rule number seven is always a lot, whenever you're giving your mock test as well as uh, during the exam, always a lot time to the sections, like how much time you will spend in part C, how much time you'll spend in part B and how much time you'll spend in part A. That way you will know whether you're going slow or fast. I have seen students who end up finishing entire part C, of course there'll be some errors, but they miss out on part B. But part B had easier questions, right? So keeping a balance is very, very important. That's my rule number seven. So for that, have time set. Okay, so generally what I would advise is if you are going with part C first, spend one, one, one hour, 15 minutes on part C. You can go max to one and a half hour, then spend another 45 minutes to part B, last 15 minutes to part A, and then remaining for the revision. That's my advice to you. Moving on to the next rule. All right, now we come to rule number eight, untold rule number eight or fact number eight, where I want to tell you that you don't need to score very high. All you have to cross is 120 marks in 200 marks. To do that, you have to just attempt 17 part B questions, uh, 18 part C questions, and only eight part A questions, okay? So if you are able to attempt this many questions, you will be able to secure your 120 cutoff and generally the cutoff is 120. So that's something which I would advise all of you. Don't try to solve everything. Focus on chunks which you are comfortable with. First decide which questions you want to solve. Okay, you open part C in your computer screen. Look at which all questions you want to solve and then solve. So spend two minutes for that section that, okay, these are the questions which seem easier for me, let me attempt those first and then only move on. And if you've already attempted 18 part C questions correctly, there's no point in wasting on part C. Go for part B, score there as well, and then come back probably and try out more part C. So, you know, many students ask me, should I skip part A? Yes, you can. You can do that, but never ever miss out on scanning the question because you don't know part A may be easy that day. Maybe that year part B was easy. Maybe that year part C was easy. So scanning the question and deciding which one to answer, it's very, very important. So 120 is a cutoff, guys. Don't try to, you know, oversmart uh, the competition and try to achieve 150 marks. It's not going to help. All you have to do is qualify. Yes, rank matters, but more than that, qualifying matters and negative mark marking matters even more. So that's my rule number eight, which is eight part A, 17 part B, and somewhere around 17 to 18 part C questions. If answered correctly, you have done the magic. Moving on to rule number nine. All right, so rule number nine is an extension of rule number eight, which is if by any chance you chose the wrong question to answer, your chances of qualifying reduces by 50%. Okay, so you choose one question also wrong, which has a negative marking, it can have a huge repercussion on your cutoff. So don't ever do that. Always scan your question paper, choose which questions you want to solve first, write it down somewhere or mark those questions that these are the questions I'm going to solve and solve only those questions. Once the time is up or almost the time is up, revise, you should feel confident that yes, you have marked it correctly. You don't need to be a Mike Tyson of CSINET. All you need to do is Rahul Dravid of CSINET, okay? So remember this fact, that was rule number nine. Moving on to rule number 10. All right, so this is the biggest rule, untold rule or fact for CSINET. Many students come and ask me, how many months I should dedicate for CSINET? Is two months enough? Is three months enough? Is six months enough? Is one year enough? So here's my answer to all of you. Three months of dedicated uh, studying and practice. Now, this is there is a condition here, but the condition is, you must have studied your MSc properly. 
Now, at the same time, three months of dedicated studying and practice is more than enough to qualify. But if you had not so good conceptual knowledge or uh, you could not grab good marks in your MSc, you already know, okay, this is where if I want to qualify, then I need to start early. Remember Shoaib Akhtar, the fast bowler or Venkatesh Prasad, whenever he used to ball, he'll have a long margin, right? Lo long running markup, then only he'll throw the ball, right? So to, if you really want to uh, bowl fast in say Sayanet, if you really want to hit a wicket, or score a wicket or score high marks, then you should start preparing early if in case your MSc is MSc conceptual knowledge is not that good or maybe you are not good in some parts of the syllabus which you have already marked. That was my point number one. So guys, this is where it comes now. Coming to dedicated practice right now, Biotechnica has got this uh, crash course running on our app the link for the app is given in the description it's a free course and it's a free app so all of you are invited to attempt uh, the questions with us revise the syllabus with us and experience the great classes the great uh, knowledge our faculties have and how they can transform your studying right so come and join us and uh, also i would like to add here we'll keep coming with more such videos so don't forget to subscribe to our channel comment below what kind of videos you want because csir net and biosciences is our, is our expertise okay we are not a generalist dealing with a lot of diseases or you can say competitive exams we are a specialist we deal with only one or two exams and we excel in that csir net and gate is one of those so guys if you really are serious if you want dedicated preparation come join us biotechnica and shaker suman is always at your service thank you so much for watching this video i hope you liked it seven no ten untold rules which we have given you today go ahead follow them and you will definitely crack csir net all the best take care bye bye